what what do you think Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley's real relationship was? Concubine, master. I knew the day would come when someone would bring up Diddy's former assistant, Fonsworth Bentley. And once again, Jaguar Wright coming through with the T. So Jaguar claims that Fonsworth was Diddy's concubine. And though Fonz is now a family man with two kids, Jaguar thinks Fonz lives in ATL for a reason, if you know what I mean. It's funny because Atlanta is like a gay mecca. You would think that there would be no need for download culture, but download culture is thriving in Atlanta still. Now, if you remember Fonz, he was that dapper looking guy that Diddy made follow him everywhere, holding a giant umbrella. But rumor has it that that's not all he was holding. And Jaguar Wright is now saying Diddy must have done something to Fonz that made him run almost as fast as Cassie did. How do you feel about him making her search for prostitutes who were dark skinned with big black penises? That's literally what he made her search for. I mean, that's what he into. He into BBCs. Y'all know Fonsworth Bentley probably got the craziest Diddy stories out of everyone because no way he was carrying that umbrella all that time and has nothing to say. So to give you some context, Fonsworth Bentley, whose real name is Derek Watkins, first appeared on the scene in the early 2000s. He started off as a rapper making an appearance on the band's 2002 album Too Hot for TV. The following year, Fonz was featured on the Good Day Good Sir skit on Outkast's Speaker by the Love Below album. And then in 2004, he made a cameo in the music video of Kanye's The New Workout Plan. Fonz also worked as a songwriter and he's credited on multiple tracks on Kanye's album Yeezus, including On Sight, Black Skinhead, I Am God, and Hold My Liquor. In 2008, Fonz was also featured in the Yes We Can music video for Barack Obama's presidential campaign. So basically, this guy was everywhere, but no one really knew what his main job was. That is, until he started following Diddy around with that big umbrella. So this was back when Diddy decided to change his name from Puff Daddy to P Diddy, and he needed a clean slate after some messy business at a club back in 1999 stuff, bribery, you name it. Diddy announced his name change in 2001, and just months later, he was photographed in Central Pay in the company of this dapper, umbrella-carrying gentleman. So Fonz stepped in, tried to clean up Diddy's image, got him looking sharp, and basically became his style guide to being a real gentleman. Fonz even wrote and published a book on etiquette called Advance Your Swagger, how to use manners, confidence, and style to get ahead. And it was Diddy who gave him his new name. Fonz later told the New York Times, Times, I remember the day exactly. It's going to be in the movie about my life. Sean waved his hands in my face and said, your life has just changed. Are you ready? Well, his life sure did change, but probably not in the way he expected. See, word on the street is that Fonz wasn't just Diddy's style coach. In fact, according to Jaguar Wright, they had more like a concubine master type relationship. What, what do you think Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley's real relationship was? concubine, master. Now, by the mid-2010s, Fonz had already carved a name for himself as a songwriter and producer, having worked with everyone from Kanye to Gucci Mane. So you would think his career would only go up from there. But then, sometime around 2015, he suddenly disappeared from the industry scene, and no one ever dared ask Diddy what happened to his assistant. If I remember correctly, Diddy only said it was time for Fonsworth to move on, and he wishes him the best. The same thing he said when Cassie finally managed to run away. Way. Now, we do know that Fawns moved to Atlanta, got married to a woman named Fawn Chambers Watkins, and they welcomed two kids. But see, this means nothing, really. And if you ask Jaguar Wright, the only reason Fawns rebranded as a family man is because he went through some stuff with Diddy. And by stuff, I mean <clears throat> freak offs. So you think you think he was Diddy's concubine? Absolutely. He was too complicit and he was too compliant. And he just disappeared. He disappeared faster than Mace did. Mace went. When in. Mace ran from Diddy, you could see the trailer just fire from his footsteps <laughs> as he ran. That is to true. The um, but I, I just I don't understand why people don't ask why. People, oh yeah, yeah, he gone. Oh, okay. Nobody bothered to ask why. 
Why doesn't anybody ever want to know why? Now, I also want to touch briefly on something that's been trending on social media lately and that Jaguar also mentioned in her recent interview about Fonsworth. And that's how many of these men who are on the DL mistreat women. Womanizers, men that f around on women, they hella is they can't find what they're looking for is because they're looking for a man. I'm just saying. I done been with it. I done laid in the bed with it. I done heard it. I done seen it. It's not you. <laughs> you cannot possibly fulfill what he's looking for. You don't have the parts. So don't blame you. Don't get in your feelings. Drop them and move on. To be clear, we're not talking about gay men who are in the closet because in the closet and on the DL are two different things. And a lot of these men who are on the DL stay on the DL because they actually enjoy sneaking around and leading double lives. But it's wild though. It's like, what's the point for being down low in this day and age? Mm. Like if you still on the down low, it's just because you like the thrill of lying and getting away with it. Men like this usually end up having multiple kids, often with different women, knowingly fooling these women into relationships and marriages only to destroy them both physically and mentally. I don't know y'all, but I'm starting to see a pattern. Diddy had six biological kids with four different women. Dwight Howard has five children with five different women. Clive Davis was married twice and had four kids before he came out as bisexual. And then word on the street is that Tristan Thompson also also, whew, let me not get into that right now. On the other hand, women who knowingly get involved with this type of man and then play happy family in public, well, they're just as bad as they are. Is it true I wish that I would walk down the f aisle to a man who I knew didn't want to have sex with me and suck better than me. I wish I would. Wow. It's the honeymoon and he trying to figure out who going to rub his feet and play with his like no i'm good i'm good what's also crazy is that according to the latest reports cassie's lawsuit was heavily redacted and gene deal said diddy most likely took out the parts where cassie talked about how these male s workers diddy hired were there for his pleasure do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have with her is something fishy about that, bro. Because you got to realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the Diddy people was six months ago. So some of that stuff was cut out. Okay. We're going we're gonna to give you this, but you got to cut this part out. Anything in that lawsuit, you got to realize that we only got a portion of it because it's been chopped up. Things has been taken out. So somebody would look a certain way. So now let's think about this for a second. If what Gene Deal is saying is true, it means Diddy was more worried that Cassie would expose him for sleeping with men than he was about being exposed for essaying women, them, and trafficking them? Ugh, this whole situation is making me sick to my stomach because as Jaguar Wright pointed out, everyone is doing all this sneaky stuff, throwing freak offs, cheating, losing. It's no wonder people are miserable and can't connect with anyone on a deeper level. I think the greatest issue that I'm having now with sexuality is that it's being exploited and it's becoming a big fucking fad and joke. And people really aren't making connection. They're not making connection. We just, it's, it's too much going on. And a lot of that has to do with a lot of these false relationships, these down low, these secret lovers, because it's not just men that these people, it, everyone's a secret. Have you noticed that? It's all a secret. It's just one big 
secret. Anyway, people on social media are now saying Fonsworth Bentley would probably have a lot to say on this topic. Someone on X wrote, oh, Fonsworth has a story of all stories, I'm sure. It's crazy that this man Diddy had a paid slave that followed him around and we all thought it was okay. Had the man dancing all in the videos, lol, and we were all like, okay, even though nobody else was doing that or ever did. And then another person added, so was Fonsworth Bentley setting up those freak offs for Diddy? By the way, Cassie explicitly mentioned in her lawsuit that Diddy's <clears throat> assistant would help organize the freak offs, book the hotel room, stock up on Astroglide and baby oil, the whole nine. So if Diddy goes down for S trafficking, who knows? Maybe Fonsworth will be compelled by law to tell us exactly what his Diddy duties were. Well, let me know how y'all feel about this whole Fonsworth Bentley situation. Do you think he'll ever speak up on his past with Diddy? And could he be the assistant? Cassie mentioned in her lawsuit? Let me know in the comments, y'all, and then check out this next video.